All right, now to a fascinating mystery. How did this stolen masterpiece end up in an elderly couple's bedroom? It's a question that captured the attention of the FBI and a Texas man who sold the painting to an antique store. Jason Whiteley traveled all the way to Arizona and New Mexico for this WFAA original. There's no telling how many miles they traveled. They were both school teachers and they would take every opportunity to go to pretty much the four corners of the earth. Rita and Jerry Alter saw all seven continents, 140 countries. Ron Roseman's favorite aunt and uncle. My uncle could tell stories all day long. But Ron never expected the story he would learn after they passed away. At what point did you get a phone call from the FBI? They, had, they uh, assured me that uh, I wasn't in any trouble and that they um, were inquiring about a painting that was found in my aunt's house. Jerry died five years ago. His aunt Rita passed away this summer. Ron, who lives in Texas, is the executor of their will. Did you know the one they were talking about? It was um, behind their bedroom door. That's the painting. 40 by 30, oil on canvas, hung behind the door there. They told me that was stolen. There's a painting there that was stolen from the University of Arizona Art Library 30 some odd years ago. Did they say how much it was worth? My understanding that it's uh, appraised at $160 million. Two details Ron did not know when he sold it and everything else in his aunt's house to an antique dealer in Silver City, New Mexico for $2,000. The last thing I ever expected to see was that. James Cutera is the customer to first recognize it. James actually kneeled down in front of the painting and was trying to scratch at it. And I grabbed him by his wrist and he said, do you know what you have here? I think the fact that I offered 200000 kind of got their attention a little bit. By the time the third customer came in and said something, that's when we picked it up and we locked it in the bathroom. The painting is called Woman Ochre, Abstract Expressionism, painted by Willem de Kooning in the mid-50s and donated to the university a few years later. The theft happened the day after Thanksgiving in 1985. A security guard agreed to let a man and a woman come in the museum just before it opened. The woman distracted the guard right here at the base of the stairs. The man goes upstairs, uses a blade to cut out that painting and they both take off in a hurry. At the time, back in 1985, though, there were no cameras in here and no clues about what happened, except for a rust-colored two-door car speeding away outside. No license plate, anything. Very vague description. Mr. and Mrs. Alter had a red two-door car. Yes. What do you think about that as a potential clue? Everything's always a clue. And there's more. Jerry and Rita lived on 20 acres, a few hours away in Cliff, New Mexico, on the edge of the mountains of the Gila National Forest. Both are New York natives, they loved art, and they built a pool, which is a rare luxury around here. Plus, how did they visit 140 countries on school teacher salaries and still have more than a million dollars in their savings accounts when they died? Brian Seastone is the chief of the University of Arizona Police Department, and in 1985, was assigned to the theft of the painting. Are you disappointed you haven't put handcuffs on anyone for taking this? No, the more important thing is, is to get it back. Do you think you might put handcuffs on anyone? Don't know yet. Back in Silver City, New Mexico, that antique dealer recognized his newly purchased painting in this USA Today article from 2015 and decided to call the university. Sounds corny, but I had daydreams of getting that phone call of somebody calling up or somebody mysteriously sending a package and the painting being inside of it, you know? I mean, kind of just these silly, silly things um, that I did think about, but I don't think I honestly thought it would actually happen. <laughs> Within 36 hours, a team from the museum reunited with the painting propped up against a wall in southwest New Mexico. It was like seeing a ghost of something in a way because I've only known this painting from photographs and seeing it in person, there were certain elements of it that were really familiar and certain elements that you can only discover by looking at the original work of art. You think the altars were behind this? Yeah. Why? My personal thought, and it may be completely wrong, uh, but... Um, when I first saw where the painting was hanging in the house, it was for their private display. 
It wasn't for anybody else. It was hung behind that door, so when that door was open, nobody could see it. There's another interesting clue as well. A book of short stories that Jerry wrote in 2011. In it, a fictional account about a couple who steals a 120 carat jewel from a museum, distracting the guard and then fleeing in a getaway truck, stealing the jewel and hanging it behind a secret wall in their home for their own viewing pleasure. Similar details to the art heist. You don't think they had anything to do with it? I can't imagine that they would. That wasn't the aunt and uncle I knew. This summer, after 32 years and under armed guard, Woman Ochre returned to its home at the museum. But how it ended up behind that bedroom door and what role Jerry and Rita might have played is a mystery that couple took to their graves. Jason Whiteley, Channel 8 News.